The media, not only here in Kenya, but elsewhere, has been covering some of those important stories. But of course, we start with right here at home. And corruption has been one of those big stories the country has been focusing on. EACC has been on the spotlight, the PAC, now the Agricultural Committee. It is where we'll begin this morning. But first, let me introduce my guest to you, Sharon Momani, who's my colleague here at KTN, joins us for the very first time. It is good to see you on the newsroom. Good to see you. Looking Sophie. lovely. Thank you. She was my teacher, Daysta once, Nancy <laughs> Booker. She's now Chair, Journalism Department, Multimedia University of Kenya. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And also Patrick Gadara, who I just called the media basha, is also here, <laughs> communication <laughs> consultant. That's <laughs> unfair. <laughs> you do a good job. It is, it, you help us evaluate ourselves. It's a good thing. I hope so. Yeah? So thank you all for being with us today. And as I mentioned, let's begin uh, cor on corruption because a lot has been said in the past few days. We now have this report on EACC's performance that in three years, only three cases uh, have been prosecuted. Uh, but Ababu, one on KTN on Sunday with Yvonne Okwara, said towards the end of that uh, checkpoint interview, that the problem is that the media now has been focusing on the shenanigans, what he call sideshows mm -hmm. instead of what the PAC has been releasing in as far as the reports is concerned for the past three years. Barack Muluka as well uh, had a few articles, an article on the same saying mm -hmm. that yes, why is the media not focusing on the substance of the issues at hand mm -hmm. instead of this, again, what they describe as sideshows? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start with you, Patrick. Is the media missing the point on that conversation? Uh, I, I think on corruption, uh, uh, the media has been missing the point for a while. Um, I, I think there has been more concentration, if you will, on the politics of corruption as opposed to the substance um, uh, uh, of, 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 of the allegations themselves. Um, uh, I also think that, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll qualify that a bit, I do think that um, in terms of the revelations that come out, and it's not just now with uh, Ababu and everybody else, if we go back and look from Golden Bug all the way to uh, anglo listening and stuff, the media has been um, quite active in bringing out or, or uh, highlighting cases of corruption. But whether there is follow-up, whether there is looking at the systemic problems that we have with corruption, um, because it's not just a matter of a few people stealing. So do you agree um, that PSC coverage was focusing on a side trend instead of substance? Um, yes, I think it, it degenerated into uh, uh, the political fight between the Babu initially, it was perceived as a Babu versus uh, a Raila with the recording, you know, and then it became a Babu versus his people in the, uh, uh, his fellow MPs in the PAC. And in all of this, what was being lost is there were serious allegations that were being put forward. You know, um, and a lot of them, in fact, I, I saw the tour that Ababu did uh, to Media House and he kept saying that he's not accused of anything. All right, let me you know, bring... That's actually yeah. not true. There, there's, there was a letter the, that, that led to his, uh, um, to the vote of uh, 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 no confidence when he, he barely squeaked through. Um, and it listed, you know, some serious allegations to do with bribery, to do with doctoring of reports ETC that I think um, I should be forced to respond to. Yeah. Booker, for those who say it's a sideshow, and the flip side of that argument is PAC is the most powerful opposition-led committee in the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. It's a watchdog committee. It's supposed to be keeping the government in check. When it is plagued with these kinds of allegations, surely, shouldn't there be enough scrutiny? Because then how much trust can the public have on reports if those coming up with the reports are already on the firing line? Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Sophie. I think let me I just start by saying that uh, one of the challenges that journalists are then facing mm -hmm. is understanding corruption and the different facets that it takes. Uh, over, over the last couple of years, when you look at uh, the coverage of corruption, each of the cases that have come up have you know, taken their own form and shape. And so the challenge then for journalists is how do we uh, unearth what needs to be brought out into the public domain? And so uh, with that then, you know, the move towards focusing much, much more on the sideshows rather than the real issues of the day uh, would then come, you know, come, come to bear. 
Uh, and, and I guess what this means is that with every situation then, maybe the starting point is how then do we define corruption? Mm. What is corruption, you know? And uh, that then would be a good starting point to help uh, media even know exactly what to, you know, what to look for, to look for. in, in uh, unearthing some of the stories that, you know, revolve around, around corruption. Okay. And so in, in this particular case, you know, I think there's a lot more that needs to be done, a lot more investigation investigation uh, you know I, I think the stories that have been covered by media seem to raise questions uh, much more than answers I, and the public is intelligent enough to know that there are certain gaps that you know haven't been filled that we we still need to be uh, informed about that need to be brought to bear and uh, what what the coverage has done is more or less teased out, you know, what some of the issues Isn't are. Isn't that the role of the media? Because the media wouldn't it, on of itself not answer mm -hmm. those questions. It is for it to raise them and then for, you know, nature, you'd imagine to take its course in as far as its prosecution, investigations and the, and the rest. I think, I think in terms of, of corruption and some of the ills that, uh, you know, society grapples with, it, it's much more than just teasing out the issues. Okay. That, uh, you know, media plays a watchdog role. And in a situation, especially on issues of corruption, where, you know, there's a lot of despair and nobody knows where to turn to, mm -hmm. people rely a lot on the media to be able to provide those answers. Yeah. And so in this particular instance, I guess we still have a lot of room uh, to uh, bring out to bear uh, the issues that um, you know that are being raised, the allegations that are, are being are being put forth, mm -hmm. uh, and, and bring them to bear in a manner that uh, you know you more or less have complete and balanced uh, coverage at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. Sharon, as a journalist, what do you see as the <coughs> challenges that one faces covering mm -hmm. these stories, in as far as giving what the issues, covering those issues that have been raised, that perhaps we need to be meeting mm -hmm. at a point of ex ensuring there's more information mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. in as far as these stories are concerned mm -hmm. and exposing the challenges mm -hmm. in uncovering some mm -hmm. of this corruption. Yeah, and as Ms. Booker rightly says, most of the time we uh, bring out more questions than mm -hmm. answers to these uh, issues and the ills that face us. But I think one thing that as journalists we might want to challenge ourselves to do is to stick with these questions and follow the, stick with the stories to the end. Mm -hmm. Because much as we may not answer those questions, but if you stick with them and highlight what, what, are, what are these issues and the public is following these stories to the end. Because some of the times, most of the times actually, we just we play a reactive uh, kind of a position in the sense that something blows out and then we run to cover it and then the moment something else blows up then we forget this one and rush to the next one so if you keep asking those questions so how far have we gone who are the you know the people behind these things yeah. to the end then somebody somewhere is going to be forced to give the answer and that sounds like a lot of what Patrick would say to stick with it but always my question to him which I've never quite gotten the answer is how realistically with the very many demands mm -hmm. say on a media house mm -hmm. so many stories on every mm -hmm. you know every single day coming mm -hmm. to the desk how do you keep a story alive mm -hmm. and yet there are new very many stories coming through every other day mm -hmm. how do you balance that out and I believe that we should have uh, like if I'm covering corruption mm -hmm. stories or this particular PSC story then I should stick with it if there's a form of framework that can come up such that something else that is coming and there are reporters who are not following particular mm -hmm. stories at that point, then let me stick with this one. If I have to go and do something else, but just keep an eye on that so one. specialization. Yes, yeah, specialization. Okay. Yeah, and just follow the story to the end. Yeah. And there's a way you can always bring a hook, even if... Um, it has died in the in the in this institution that it is in that people mm. have kept quiet about it then just raise it they have a responsibility to answer the questions to the public yeah yeah All right um i think there is uh, i mean two, two issues here first there's a resourcing issues uh, 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 with regard to the press mm -hmm. um uh, and especially press on tv who have their one hour uh, at nine or one hour at seven within which to cram in everything, everything. so um perhaps with the migration and everything, we might have more space for more outlets um, that cover news exclusively, you know, and for longer periods of time, you know, much more often than just a nine o'clock uh, or seven o'clock bulletin. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, secondly, I think there is a problem with the uh, institutional memory um, when it comes to the press. Um, lots of these uh, scandals and crises are reported as if they spring from nowhere. 
you know, as if there's no history to them. You know. um, and we are blind to the, the system underneath that keeps, you know, even in the times when we are not concentrating on it, you know, they, they are, it keeps churning out uh, 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 these sorts of scandals. And I mean, I agree with her about the uh, um, the definitions of corruption. You know, yeah. um, if you look at what uh, Qatar, for example, was doing in Gilgil, mm -hmm. you know, how is that not corruption? You know, um, and but it, it it turns out everybody speaks about it, and then it disappears. You know, it's, it's not raised again. And even when new issues come up, as you mm -hmm. said, there's no reference back mm -hmm. that actually there was other things going on. But there's, I think there's also the, the, the challenge of um, you don't want something to look like it's tell news that you're dwelling on it. Mm -hmm. Because we also, um, as a society, we are very forgetting of these things. Like something comes up, you're very, you know, angered or whatnot. But in a very short period of time, you've forgotten about but that. But what, what, what I would disagree I with the that... Responsibility of <laughs> yes, uh, I mean, what I would disagree with that is we're not a forgetting nation. We are just simply allowed to forget. You know, because these things um, happen and then they're forgotten. They're mm -hmm. not raised. They're not mm -hmm. constantly being questioned. Why is there no uh, issue? And when, when uh, you cite the report uh, of three convictions, I mean, ask any Kenyan in the city to tell you the EACC does nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's there in the mind, but it's not constantly referred to. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to one final point: that the agencies that are tasked. Um, uh, with combating corruption, you know, with actually doing something about it, are themselves not put under a spotlight. You know, why is it they are not securing these convictions? You know, and one of the things that this, the current Bruhaha uh, 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 has, has brought out mm -hmm. is that there is a problem with those very institutions. You know, if you're having people in, 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 in the Which is why in it's not a sideshow. It is important yeah, that that is important. covered. Yeah, it's important. I mean, I, I, I'm one of those who would say... Because then it shows the It's important mm -hmm. that we, 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 we look at those uh, uh, commissions, you know, uh, the, the, the parliamentary committees, you know. Um, but you remember, uh, for example, uh, uh, when uh, the, uh, Babu Namamba had his uh, uh, committee trial, I suppose if I call it, uh, when they wanted to, to remove him from the chairmanship. You know, uh, it was reported at the time that um, uh, he had tabled for, uh, uh, or he had implicated four MPs, you know, and that's how he survived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so if they are cutting deals amongst themselves, themselves. these are things we need to be yeah. questioning okay. you know, and following up. And I don't think I'd yeah. call them sideshows, but you know, yeah. when, as they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> you want to bring out the smoke first as you get into the fire, the fire. and turn right. it down. And yeah. Buka, so, yeah. Yeah. you mentioned I, the media being a watchdog mm -hmm. as we move away from this corruption story. Mm -hmm. It appears that as a country, we know we're making one step forward. You hear the World Bank talking about by 2016, 7% growth in our economy. But that is being jeopardized with the many other steps you're taking backwards and as far as corruption is concerned. Mm -hmm. So in the bigger scheme of things, the media being a watchdog, what can be done going forward? Because this is a huge problem. It's one that we've faced over a long period of time. It is not a new problem. Mm -hmm. What has to happen? One of the things that media needs to do, and, and I, I just like to you know, uh, step back a little and just follow up on what something that Gadara has said, that part of the challenge is understanding the history and where you know some of these um, issues are emerging from, uh, which means that from a media house's perspective, there needs to be an investment in terms of time. Mm. Uh, you know that some of these stories are not things that you to read those reports. You know to understand. be able to read those reports, understand them, internalize them, interrogate those reports, and consult with people who understand. Mm -hmm. You know and can be able to interpret. You know uh, some of these reports. That it takes a lot more work, a lot more um, resources even in terms of financial investment and being able to unearth what these issues are. I think one, one of the reasons why we then focus on the sideshows a lot more is because we do not it's have the time. It's a lot that. easier. It's more sensational. It's, it's you know, self yeah. It's self-papers. It's self -papers. <laughs> yeah. You know, but beyond that, you know, people are looking for much more. Yeah. And I guess the transitions that we are seeing in media would also be good in the sense that, uh, you know, media houses then will have to uh, you know, confirm the reason for existence. Mm. Uh, people are looking for much more because mm. if, it, if it's just about what's sensational, I can get that on social media, I can get that anywhere. But the moment I pick up a newspaper or I turn on to a TV set, I'm looking at much more than just what was sensational about it. 
And so uh, the question is, what, what, you know, going forward then, what, what should help? And, you know, following up on stories to their you know, logical conclusion, yeah. you may not be able to answer all the questions, but at least, you know, attempt in whatever it is that you're doing to provide as many answers or even raise more pertinent questions mm. that would then put some of these bodies or institutional, uh, you know, frameworks uh, interrogating, uh, you know, constantly interrogating their role and, uh, you know, basically calling them to, uh, you know, to perform the tasks that they have been assigned to do. Okay, let's uh, cross to Mandera and the leadership there. We saw the second attack, uh, well, he says five so far on his life. Um, mm -hmm. That's the governor, Ali Robert. The senator as well talking about how they feel the national government has forgotten uh, about Mandera. He's treating Mandera as though it's not part of Kenya. And in the past, when there have been stories in this part of the country, we have mentioned and had that conversation here in the newsroom, whether the media as well treats and handles these stories just as the national government does and everybody else, that it is that county that's far away with those unique challenges and issues. And um, yeah, Sharon, do you get that sense? Um, I'd want to say, and it would look like it's a bias, that as, as, as a station, KTN, we have particularly focused on highlighting the issues in, in North Eastern. Mm -hmm. But as far as security matters are, are concerned, I would say that, yes, there's more that we can do in, sen in the sense of, um, you know, controlling or just mediating the conversation as for what is happening really there. What are this? I mean, these are stories that keep coming up. Is there any... Uh, anything that the government, the national government is doing mm -hmm. in that sense and do we keep pestering them, do we keep asking that are there any apparatus, any, anything that is happening on the ground to mitigate not that we always have to be reactive and reporting when this is happening we know that the area is fluid in terms of uh, security mm -hmm. and being safe and what not, so what is being done, what is the conversation that we are having in that regard yeah. and as a media how are we making sure that that conversation keeps happening because the, the, uh, the issue of insecurity has not stopped in the okay. area. Mm -hmm. I, I think, let me, <laughs> you know, every time you think of Mandera, the first thing that comes to your mind is insecurity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, you look at, at the framing of, of Mandera. Whenever there's a breaking story on Mandera, what do we see on television? The map of Kenya? And then, and then you see, um, <laughs> I you know, know. <laughs> have enough you know no, <laughs> no, no shots. And, and even when it's such a big story, yeah. you know, it's the lead story. And, you know, you'll see the Starts map of Kenya map. and then you'll see the red. And um, a call, it will not be a light link. <laughs> yes. And then you will provide those updates as they come, you know. That in itself plays into, the, into, into people's psyche. And, 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 and then, you know, you relegate Mandera. It, it's not as prominent, so much so that, you know, if there's a story outside of the country and you have, you have, uh, you know, footage, that takes precedence of a mm. Mandera, you know. And, and so the truth is that maybe we haven't done justice in terms of profiling Mandera as part of Kenya and bringing it to that point where whatever happens in Mandera is as important to me as somebody in Nairobi. You know, uh, you ask people what do they know about Mandera, they'll tell you it's at somewhere in the map of Kenya, and whenever there's something happening, you'll see the red, you know, a light flickering <laughs> at where, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, you know, the issue is. That's what people remember. Yeah. So that the other stories that are then are important mm. are updates of what, what already happened. Yeah. Uh, what does this mean? That in terms of profiling Mandera, the truth is that maybe we haven't done enough, no. you know, and, and, and that means that even within the public um, conversations, it's, 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 uh, it's not given priority, mm. you know. Uh, what do we need to do to, to profile it, to bring it to that place of prominence mm -hmm. so that we are concerned about Mandera as we would be about what's happening at Village Market mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, the CBD of, 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 of Nairobi or, you know, Nakuru or Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, to pick up from uh, 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 where There's she left There's the map, her. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, but to pick up from where she left off, yeah. um, uh, I, I think that, the uh, first, again, going back to the resourcing issue, you know, um, um, we've got now this journalist who's kind of fly in for the day mm -hmm. to Madeira, do a report and fly out.
So by sort by of night. continuous uh, our presence uh, on the ground, digging up what the issues are and the stories are, is, is not there. But I also think, in a more profound sense, that people are not, uh, the media doesn't really explain that what happens in Mandera eventually will come and yeah. haunt you here. Yeah. That it is not a different country yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. And it points to a failure of the security system, not just there, but across mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the counties, with, uh, uh, all the counties like, uh, and, and across the country. And I think, um, uh, uh, again, to go back to what you said about the short memory, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't too long ago people were killed in Mandara, mm -hmm. you know, not too long ago people were killed in Paketoni, mm -hmm. you know. But all these conversations somehow disappear, mm -hmm. you know. And even the context of the government's response, you know, where is its plan for tackling um, uh, uh, insecurity, insecurity, you know. And there's this tendency to kind of uh, uh, conflate insecurity with terrorism, you know, to say that um, our problem is terrorism, not our, uh, our institutions and our, our system, mm. our security system, mm -hmm. it's those bad guys called terrorists, you know, mm. without the understanding that they are actually um, taking advantage of failures that were already present in the system. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm. when the president last year went in front of his, um, uh, uh, he had a meeting of his uh, big wigs, security big wigs, mm -hmm. and uh, purported to provide a vision, you know, or a, a, a ten-point plan, which was nothing of the sort. Mm -hmm. There has been no interrogation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of it, mm -hmm. you know, and you know what does it mean? How does it translate? And then a few months later, they come up with a security bill. You know, um, that we all make noise about because of his constitutional issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're still not asking where is the plan for tackling insecurity. Yes. You know, so once the media starts looking at well, the underlying issues, issues the, the yeah. problems with the security mm -hmm. system and asking where are those solved? Why till today don't we have the National Police Service Act Correct. fully implemented, or the okay. National Intelligence uh, mm -hmm. uh, Service Act? implemented or the KDF Act implemented. Mm. Mm. And, and that's the idea. <laughs> Perhaps, Sharon, it will also be good to not only see most, if not all, the stories from Mandara and mm. Northeastern being about security. It would mm -hmm. be good to talk about something else. What else is there? Because they're not all about people in danger yes. and being attacked and yes. killed. And that is what Ms. Booker talks about, yeah. profiling. That's the image that we because we, we as the media, we actually play a very important role in what picture the we bring out and yeah. the perception. So you also want to bring out the other face of Mandera. It's not just insecurity and it's not just that. And I think we've tried to do that, maybe not as, as much. And there's also the issue of uh, resources as he speaks huge, about. It's a huge mm -hmm. issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. Yeah, it's a, we, we can't hide away from it because it's really a These are small thing. entities you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, uh, these media companies, <laughs> they're massive. You know, yeah. um, and if they really wanted to resource this, you know, uh, they would do it. You know, it's, it's, do it's, it. it's a choice that they make. You know, um, uh, it's like we had discussions here about the choices for for live coverage, and they say, "Oh, we can't cover everything. We can't cover demonstrations in town." And then you go cover some anodyne uh, um, university graduation ceremony for three, four hours, and they wonder, yeah. "These are choices you're making." You know, Money. So yeah. and, and, <laughs> and, and, and which journalists are sent to cover, you know, uh, for example, some of those issues so that uh, the seasoned journalists mm -hmm. are left in the city uh, mm -hmm. to cover politics mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know the intern who's just walked into a media house you know is sent with a cameraman to Mandera yeah. and that in itself then plays into the kind of stories that you're likely to get you know from and there. And the seriousness is yes. taken with and, and, and when you look at, at um, you know big media houses the international media you know the likes of CNN look at the kind of investments that they put for example mm -hmm in the coverage of Africa. We can talk about how that's done. But in terms of investment mm -hmm. and the kind of journalists that they have, mm -hmm. you know, in some of these regions that would be, you know, far flung from where they are, they have invested in, in this, in the, in the human resource that they have there, mm -hmm. in the financial resources that they're putting in, so that you're able to um, provide balanced coverage, you're able to provide depth 
and, and a lot of investigation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as far as these this issues are, are concerned. Okay, let's mm. shift gears uh, to what was a big story the day before yesterday, Kajado Central by election. Mm. So it is one that was, you know, um, the politicians, we had them talk about it as significant for their coalitions in as far as 2017 is concerned. Uh, the standard, I believe, the day before, the day of the by-election had uh, Raila on the headline and um, Uhuru Kenyatta, the president, you know, saying that this is it, this is a battle uh, for the titans and we'll see who emerge, who emerges winner. So in terms of how this was played up and covered by the media, Gadara, did you completely miss the issues at heart? Especially when you look at some of the things and as far as political parties and the actions by even some of these candidates mm -hmm. are concerned. Was that a conversation completely forgotten? And has the media gotten to a point that because the politicians are choosing not to respect the law or disregarding and watering it down, then it's okay, we'll just cover then what they choose to give us. <laughs> um, uh, I think that the, the, the whole Kajiado thing uh, shows how the, the media is not um, are driving the agenda so much as following mm. the, the the cues it's given by the politicians. You know, um, uh, what were the issues in the Kajadu election apart from Kaiseri has resigned uh, and there's a gap? Mm. What were they running on? You know, um, I watched the KTN coverage uh, uh, on the day before the election. You know, and they had a big screen showing who the candidates were for what parties, ATC. But very little on what their platforms were. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what what were the issues? What and 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 and, and I find and, and I think that um, uh, we are falling into the the same mold of, of going after and highlighting the politics of personalities and of parties, uh, as opposed to what the problems for the common man are. And if if we assume that our politics is about solving problems. You know, that we elect people into parliament so they can actually go and resolve problems. What are these problems? And they are not articulated, you know. So it's all presented as this big fight between uh, uh, JAP or Jubilee and, <laughs> and, 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 and Corn. Uh, the second thing is um, uh, uh, some people have, uh, have said that this, the, the fact that there was no violence or fighting um, uh, uh, in, in Kajado, that this is a sign of maturity. Mm -hmm. But what maturity is it if you've got a candidate who just a few weeks ago, you know, he jumped from the party that refused to nominate him, you know, to the other one, you know. And had initially jumped yeah, yeah, precisely, you know. So if you're building a party-based democracy, as these guys keep telling us, you know, uh, it doesn't seem like parties matter, matter too much, mm -hmm. you know, uh, over here. You know, uh, yeah, I don't think they are, yeah, and, and one final thing is, I mean, of course, there's a conduct of the, uh, uh, of the CS, but I think this goes beyond just him, you know. There are agencies that are tasked, you know, with looking into this conduct and enforcing the laws that we have. And in many cases, you know, the, you don't find them, you know, taking action. You know, so, uh, Kaiseri from um, uh, I mean, going out and uh, openly, uh, uh, campaigning uh, uh, for somebody mm -hmm. is not brought up, no, uh, uh, in the context of, for example, the EACC, mm -hmm. which is tasked with uh, uh, enforcing the ethics and rules, mm -hmm. you know, being asked, well, what are you doing about this? You know, and, and these are the sort of things that I would hope um, uh, 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 should be kept on and, uh, and people should, uh, 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 should, should concentrate on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, you know, with regards to the uh, Kajiado uh, elections, what the media has covered in the last few days has been what they ought to have covered. The win and the loss, you know, um, uh, irrespective of the margin, was what made the news. And that's what everybody was interested mm -hmm. in. Uh, so in, in terms of news of the day, yes, that was the news of the day. In terms of prominence, yes, that was the most prominent thing to talk about at the time. But beyond that, uh, you know, we need to move away from who won and who didn't and what was the margin and ask the so what questions, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, what does this mean uh, for, 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 uh, for Kajiado? What does this mean, uh, you know, for the, politi 
polit uh, political parties mm -hmm. and you know some of the questions that Gadara is, is raising then you know mm -hmm. should now be brought uh, should now be brought to bear mm -hmm. yeah but I think in the sense of the issues that face Kajiado because barely the the by-elections were being conducted for because there was that vacuum in that mm -hmm. position mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, the issues facing Kajiado people then we should be highlighting not just the issues facing Kajiado people but the issues facing all these other uh, you know constituencies and whatnot because what made the news then as you rightly say is is what really what ought to have been covered there these candidates uh, fielding for these positions and then there's the party politics that really dominated it being uh, you know job fielding their first uh, candidates uh, as an alliance party newly formed so I think that basically is what formed the news of course uh, the sideshows as uh, can be said now is what, <laughs> <laughs> is what each of them um, not really sideshows, but in the in really the dominating thing was the party party politics. Yeah, but I mean, frankly, we, in my opinion, the, the the media allows this to be the dominating thing. You know, um, it's not that there are no issues to cover. You know, it's just that this the the, the, the option uh, that that's taken and the. Uh, the preference mm -hmm. is to cover the politics mm -hmm. uh, uh, of things. And yes, it is a political question, so the politics will be, but the politics aren't everything, mm -hmm. you know. The issues mm -hmm. under, uh, uh, underlying it, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the things that the voters, you know, should be looking at mm -hmm. and the questions that they should be asking, okay. you know, are the things that um, I, I would have hoped uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, perhaps um, against, uh, uh, against experience, mm -hmm. but I would have hoped that this, is, this should have been something that uh, right. uh, media should have focused on. Focused on. So Sharon, let's talk about a story you did yesterday. Um, the governor decided to walk from the CBD to Kempinski mm -hmm. um, because of heavy traffic and just started to <laughs> share that with the world. He tweeted <laughs> about his <laughs> treacherous walk. <laughs> and of course a lot of buzz on social media, a lot of people criticizing that. In fact, somebody uh, tweeted him back and asked, and did you die? <laughs> and he replied, he actually replied to that. He said, no, I lost some kilos because I saw his tweet and followed to see what he was replying to and it was like a tweet from someone who asked, did you die? But from that particular story, and Gadara, we've talked about the issues in Nairobi mm -hmm. before here in terms of the traffic lights, the jam. Just recently, there was that plan to remove the roundabouts and, you know, just have a better flow of traffic. Some mm -hmm. have criticized that as, you know, yes, you remove the roundabouts, but it's still an intersection. You're still having vehicles converging. Mm -hmm. And if that's happening, then you've not really solved the problem. Sharon, should your story have gone beyond telling us about the anger mm -hmm. by twifts mm -hmm. the no the old, the twitterati <laughs> <laughs> the kot um, the kenyans on twitter kenyans on twitter mm -hmm. to, to, to really the bigger challenge and issue and what has gotten us to where we are and why there's so much anger mm -hmm. directed to the governor when he tweets such a mm -hmm. that such a post actually to the, to um i highlighted that in the story in yeah. the end in the sense of uh, just a few days ago the plan they unleashed mm -hmm. with uh, the national government through yes. the ministry of transport to remove the roundabouts and have crossroads and install new a new traffic light system but really i just i was as, even as i was doing the story i was wondering like who are the advisors of <laughs> our governor because yeah. this is something that is quite emotive to mm -hmm. to residents of nairobi i mean and it's not something that you just say oh now that i have worked i have seen the I traffic know, jam and i will do something it. about it <laughs> So it was, I think the, we have talked about this issue of uh, traffic jams for a while and it's really not new to, to the public and uh, to the legislators as well. And uh, I guess the big issue is what have you been doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, just now we see that you walk, but is this your walk now going to make should everyone be walking to their destinations? Yeah, and, and when we're walking, we don't have five bodyguards yes. around us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Buka, for many people, this and why this even became a story in our primetime bulletin is because it then just takes the conversation forward. And as far as we've talked about all these crazy things, and as far as traffic is, is concerned, the people meant to fix it. For them, it's a big deal to walk. And that's when it appears to be hitting home that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, I think it. it it did one thing it, it annoyed many people mm -hmm. um whatever the motive is and who the advisors were you know that's a debate for another day but what uh, that you know what that did is just it, it evoked a lot of anger in, in many people mm -hmm. uh because 
uh, the news was the walking and not the reason, you know, as to why he's, he's actually walking. Uh, more of sensational rather than, you know, <laughs> dealing with, with the issues. And uh, um, the media covered, you know, his walking, which was the right thing for them to do. Um, but why, why did he do that? You know, the traffic jams in Nairobi, uh, you know, causing that. Um, but you know, the way that it comes out, you actually wonder whether, you know, it was because of traffic mm. or because this was an opportunity to show that, uh, you know, uh, there is something that... that we know the, the traffic. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah, we actually know, uh, you know, there, there, there is, uh, you know, there is traffic. So for, for, the, for the public, and if you have been stuck on traffic in Nairobi, I think what that does, is it makes you angry, mm. you know, that not enough is being done. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, beyond the walk, what else? I mean, of us don't have the advantage of working with this kind of security mm -hmm. detail mm -hmm. you know that he has their security issues if, if you're to walk where are you walking yeah. you know if you're on the roads you're still not you know not safe um, mm -hmm. you know I was just telling somebody the other day how you know we drive on Kenyan roads you make sure your bags are hidden nothing valuable mm -hmm. is being seen mm -hmm. your doors are locked you're basically a prisoner within that mm -hmm. car and if you're in traffic then you're in prison mm -hmm. for much longer mm -hmm. you know than uh, than somebody else out there mm -hmm. and so so um, it would be interesting to see what you know what kind of issues emerge in media as a result of that. Oh, and, this way. Yeah, and and part of that would be going back to uh, you know the the road the road network mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. There has been improvement, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but is that enough? You know, um, the public transport system and what is it that would actually make people opt to drive rather than you know taking yeah. public transport? Okay. These are the issues that we should then yeah. you know mm -hmm. be able to raise in the next couple of so days. So this story needs to go forward, Gadara. The media still needs to push it forward. Um, Yes, um, uh, I think they, they need to go a little bit deeper than uh, 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 just a surface thing of uh, uh, Kidero was walking. Um, uh, and, and also just beyond the fact that we've got jams. There's a, a question of why we have traffic jams. And there are several issues here. First, there's the elitism of, of, of the media itself. Um, the lack of recognition that the vast majority of Nairobians actually walk. Is it the media or the leadership? You know, that is the actually, leadership. Actually, even in how it is reported. Right, this, and I think we this, have actually no, let's finish, let's finish. reported this, on this, the this issue of traffic. surprise that Hidero is walking is itself. I mean, I remember <laughs> when the picture of uh, David surprise. Cameron. Wait, when the picture of David Cameron. <laughs> Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tube using public transport mm. came out, you know, and there's all this shock, you know, as if these guys really should not be doing this, mm. you know. There is a mindset that goes with that, you know. The vast majority of Nairobians walk. What is the infrastructure for them? Mm -hmm. You know, where do they walk? You know, you look at the places where the governor was, like, was walking, you know, mm. and stuff. Where are the walkways, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, these are not issues that really make uh, 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 seem to make the news. The second thing is, um, as you mentioned, he is tasked with solving a lot of these problems. You know. mm -hmm. Now, how have they gone about it? You know, um, everybody's talking now about this new plan to install uh, the intersections and, and traffic lights. We had traffic lights. We have them. We have them. You know, yeah. we bought them at mm -hmm. 437 million. Mm -hmm. We are now being told to spend another 400 million on a new set. Mm -hmm. You know, why aren't those ones working? Mm. You know, and and this is my point: is there there seems to be a lack of memory. Mm -hmm. You know, we report this as oh, it's a new initiative. It's going mm -hmm. to solve all our problems. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, it's not new. You know, it's a scam they're running. They ran it two years ago. They made lots of money. You know, um, it was highly overpriced, you know, uh, and stuff. Didn't work. Now they're doing it again. Mm -hmm. They're telling us now it's 400 million, another 400 million that they're going to spend. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all again within the context of, an, uh, it was supposed to be an 8.5 billion plan last, uh, I mean, uh, 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 two years ago. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to go to every city. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened to this money? It was supposed to have been a grant, as I understand from the Chinese. What happened to it? Mm -hmm. You know, these are questions we don't ask, mm -hmm. you know. So we are always bamboozled by the latest thing, you know, suggestion, whatever, without asking, mm -hmm. is it actually, um, uh, is it a real plan, number one? 
And the second is it what we actually need um, uh, uh, in Nairobi when you speak of the public transport system? Would that be sorted mm -hmm. by having intersections? Mm -hmm. You know, most likely not. Okay. You know, uh, and I think if if the media went beyond the headlines, mm -hmm. you know, went beyond the picture of Kidero walking, which for me was very reminiscent to Moi walking. Um, uh, 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 a few decades ago, when the, uh, during El Nino, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and asked, why is it that this keeps happening and um, problems simply don't get solved? We build roads, we still have jams. Okay. You know, are we actually uh, tackling the issues, or are we simply window dressing it for for for, mm -hmm. for the benefit of the ruling class? But right. I think that is a, yeah. a conversation that has been ongoing, mm -hmm. so we cannot uh, belittle an event that is touching on an ongoing conversation. <laughs> so that walking <laughs> was a big event to this conversation of <laughs> traffic it's jams in Nairobi. Yes. <laughs> Before stories have been done, I know yes. I've seen from the business desk a number of them. I mean, as far as road safety, mm -hmm. uh, I mean traffic, the overpasses of you know underpasses as well, mm -hmm. and and the infrastructure. What's happening now, and that the roads in Kenya and the infrastructure is built for cars, mm -hmm. not people are not mm -hmm. factored. Now yeah. we are seeing a little bit more of that happening. Yeah. Right, and uh, again, uh, you keep saying that it's being covered. I'm not sure that it is. Um, uh, oh, there is. Um, a discussion about traffic jams, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in general. Not so much, I, f I feel, a discussion of the underlying issues and causes, mm -hmm. you know. I don't think there is a, a digging up <coughs> of, you know, what the plans are and what, what problems they are mm -hmm. actually seeking to tackle, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, and, and I think in, in totality we were to not see these things as isolated, you know, oh. that the security problem is not isolated from the traffic problem. Mm -hmm. You know, that the traffic problem is not isolated from the corruption problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to, s to put all these jigsaws together and create a bigger picture, mm -hmm. then we might be able to start actually asking whether mm -hmm. the interventions you're making are mm -hmm. simply touching the surface of the problem mm -hmm. um, uh, or whether they're actually going in and delving in, in in the root causes and actually doing something that something will change. Right. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. cross yeah. to yeah. India now for a while. And we all remember the tragic, fatal gang rape of a mm. young woman there. Mm -hmm. And so there's this uh, about one hour long documentary that was put together mm -hmm. uh, by the Udwin British. Leslie. She's a British uh, based filmmaker. So it's called India's Daughter. And the Indian government burned it from airing. NDTV was planning to air it, and in place of that one hour slot they allocated, they just put the bumper of the um, of the documentary in protest of not being allowed to air the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but another media house and other people who were in support of the ban on the media argued on, on one hand that why would you want to air such a documentary? Isn't it disrespectful to the young girl who died? Mm -hmm. Because on it you have one of the rapists who's in custody, you know, talking about yes, she deserves to be raped, why was she out after 9 p.m.? You know, she would not have been killed had she not resisted rape. So that that's, you know, just very disrespectful to her memory. Others argue that it puts India in disres uh, disrespe disrepute uh, as well. Um, and all manner of discussions have gone into this. But the fact that this was banned and you have two media houses, one in support of a ban, the other still sticking to its guns and saying, yes, we'll not air it, fine, but mm. we'll still protest that particular mm. ban. Sharon? Um, I think this comes to the question of uh, the responsibility of, of the media. In, and it does not, you see, media does not exist um, exclusive of the society where it, it, it works in. So do you want, are you also working with the said or actually existing norms of, of that culture that you're reporting in? Um, I think that we, we, as a media, we stand to be ob objective. And um, what I, I applaud, the, 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 is it NDTV that yeah, ran NDTV, the, the, yeah. the logo of the documentary? Yeah, yeah. Because it was going to air it in the beginning mm -hmm, anyway. Mm -hmm. So what is the role of the media? Uh, this is a conversation about uh, civilization in India. Are we just going to shut our mouths about this issue that is affecting women in the country? Uh, so they say that it's... Um, it, actually, the documentary, when you, when you watch it, it brings out uh, issues saying that this is something that happens every often. Mm -hmm. Like, in every 20 minutes in India, mm -hmm. a woman... Yeah 
is being yeah, raped. It's a big so it's issue. actually a big issue in the country. And to want to bury their head in the sand, I think as media, you don't you do not want to be party to mm. that kind of uh, hiding from problems that need to be yeah. spoken about. So that vis-a-vis -vis what the government is saying that it's against, um, you know, normal uh, the norms of the country and whatnot. And it, it reminds me of a film that was actually uh, banned in Kenya last year. There's a film called uh, Stories of Our Lives. Mm -hmm. talks about the, the lives of gays, um, uh, the gay people, people and yeah. homosexuality. Mm -hmm. We didn't actually highlight that as the media. And mm -hmm. uh, the film commission uh, banned it on the, on the uh, premise that it promoted homosexuality and whatnot. Uh, so what is our role as a media? in terms of having these conversations. So this is what we say as a country, we, don't, we do not promote homo homosexuality. I'm talking about the film in Kenya now. But um, do we at least get to talk about these things? There is a community that is uh, the homosexual community. Mm -hmm. So um, they do not form part of the national norm. So we do not talk about the them and yeah, what you because see. So the moral responsibility of the media versus its objectivity, I think, mm. becomes the, the question yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, I think I would agree. And, uh, you know, <laughs> media finds itself in a, you know, in a very precarious position. Uh, always at the same time, everybody's punching mm -hmm. media from like all sides. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, I, I guess what the media needs to do is treat that as a privilege and not, uh, you know, no, not, not run away from that, from that responsibility. That, uh, you know, there is a lot of expectations with regards to, you know, uh, media. Uh, in any part of society mm -hmm. and in this particular case we have you know uh, conflicting voices the media that plays to culture and is culturally sensitive to the issues but you know media that plays above culture mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I guess uh, that then would be defined by what are the policies you know within the respective media houses mm -hmm. um, and my take of in it would be that, uh, we, you know, with opening up of space, yes, there'll be media houses that are part of the culture, mm -hmm. but there should also be media houses that, you know, go above the culture. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is that these things are happening and somebody needs to talk about them. Mm -hmm. when, you talk, when you think about rape in India, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's more or less the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we had, uh, there's a story, I think, on BBC about the nun who you know mm -hmm. who who was who was uh, raped mm -hmm. you know a 74 year old nun so it's it's systemic mm -hmm. you know and uh, i think shutting ourselves off and saying we don't want to talk about it doesn't solve the yeah. problem mm -hmm. and that's why you know media also needs to be able then to play above culture mm -hmm. bringing to bear some of those conversations that are unpalatable but we still we need to have, hear them. Yeah, we yeah. still need to hear them yeah. because that's the only way that you know. That's part of the of the process towards dealing with the issues and unearthing some of those sensitive issues mm -hmm. and finding hopefully uh, some solutions. Okay. You know, to, to some of these issues. Yeah. yeah. Um, first, I mean, uh, 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 I mean, the documentary was aired by the BBC, mm -hmm. uh, much to the displeasure of the uh, Indian government. And it even brings more attention to it and you back <laughs> 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 everyone wants to watch um, it. <laughs> uh, I would say that the, the role of the media is not simply to reflect mm -hmm. uh, the society within which it operates, but also to challenge mm -hmm. uh, uh, the norms within there, you know, and to allow the society to, to look at itself, you know, and to, to ask the difficult things about what needs to change ETC, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, I think that it, it's important uh, for coverage, especially for Kenyan media, to take a cue from that and to start a conversation about rape here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because it is uh, just mm -hmm. as prevalent, you know, uh, happening here, and it is just as trivialized mm -hmm. uh, uh, here. When you had the uh, Busia girl, which uh, most of media houses have now forgotten, um, uh, who, who was raped by six men and uh, who were then asked to cut grass by, at a police station. Mm. You know, made a lot of noise, you know, uh, for a short time, and then it disappears. The stories of uh, girls being dragged off matatus in Dandora, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, and being raped, you know. Okay. All these things are still happening. Mm. They're just not uh, are being seen. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we, we don't just look at India, but we look back home, you know, and we turn the lens back yeah. home and we ask, 
what is happening, uh, happening yeah. you know okay. uh, uh, here mm -hmm. and more importantly what are we doing about it what's mm -hmm. what's what oh, the authorities are at chart us okay. the second thing that it brings uh, 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 to me is who is it that decides mm -hmm. um, uh, what can and cannot be aired what mm -hmm. can and cannot be covered you know lots of people in uh, in India might have uh, issues with a documentary mm -hmm. but is it really the role of government to say that you know we don't like it so mm -hmm. let it all go on yeah which brings me back to what was happening here again with uh, the, the, the 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 security bill and the idea that the government can say mm -hmm. that actually we don't like that photo we don't think it's sensitive mm -hmm. um, uh, it shouldn't go on is that a call for government or should it be that we media houses themselves are you know, involved in some um, of these their decisions. codes or conducts etc okay. mm -hmm. yeah. are the ones to make these calls you know because government has an interest i mean mm -hmm. when it comes yeah. People are raped, but we are more concerned with how society is going to be it's perceived. Be perceived. Mm -hmm. Then I All think right. our priorities are misplaced. Our time is up. We have one minute to go, but I want a quick uh, comment from each of you on Zeo Zhuang. Some have commented following his plight. Of course, the government has since come out to say they'll um, offset all his medical bills, uh, but some have come out to criticize uh, his former employer, KBC, and said that he is owed by them. Matiangi says that his dues were all paid and he's not technically owed. What do you think about this story, briefly? Um, you know, first of all, I mean, some of us, uh, you know, grew up that does not, uh, <laughs> I hope that doesn't uh, tell people how old we are. And, you know, I remember as a child, you know, watching, uh, you know, watching Vitimbi. Yeah. And, and so, you know, my, my heart goes out to, to him and, mm. you know, and hope that he recovers uh, in, in due course. But having said that, you know, <laughs> paying the hospital bill doesn't solve the problem. Uh, and why do I say that? Because there are lots of people worth celebration out there. And there are many who have found themselves in similar predicaments. Um, but I've not had the advantage of, you know, playing out in social media mm. so much so that you're able to get the attention, you know, that, uh, you know, that Mzeo Zhuang uh, attracted. Uh, and what does this mean? That um, part of the challenge has been that a lot of our people who, who should be celebrated, you know, the likes of Zhuang and many others, you know, that there's nothing really in place to ensure that uh, you know that they are taken care of, mm. you know, for uh, for for a long period of time. What are some of the contracts that they are getting mm. into, you know? Um, and and uh, again, it points to how we as a country have uh, celebrated or not celebrated, you know, uh, the artists, you know, uh, our sportsmen, for example. We saw what happened to Contestina, you know, mm. a while back, mm. you know. So. Our, our response has always been very reactionary. reactionary. This is happening, let's come and solve the problem here and now. But you, we're not using this as, as pointers towards lessons that we should learn okay. in, in ensuring that, uh, you know, that uh, should some of these things happen, then there are certain mechanisms in place mm. to be able to solve, to solve, solve the problems. Okay, and, less yeah. than a minute, uh, mm -hmm. Sharon. So this just brought out uh, one of the keys of the many mm -hmm. of prominent people in the arts and in the sports who are in the land that don't have a, you know, a, their career end in such a dim sport. And as media, the questions we want to ask mm -hmm. is what is the problem? Is it that the remuneration is little? Is it that there's also the issue of uh, individual responsibility that had to come okay. out? Okay. Yeah, your make has a bit of a problem. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I, I think I'm not agree with what they've said. The, the problems are more systemic than they are just uh, an issue with the drunk. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, um, uh, we need to be asking about uh, the, the support mechanisms that we have um, for our sportsmen, our artists, uh, our entertainers. Yeah. You know, um, uh, in terms of the contracts they sign, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, uh, I mean, what are the safeguards for them? You know, and what's the sort of education process they need to go yeah. through you know, uh, to understand what their rights are under the law, so yeah. they can actually um, uh, 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 push them, so they can uh, uh, struggle for them. You know, um, it is it. But in the case we have, where in essence they're left um, uh, 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 to their devices and to the mercy of their promoters, the mercy yes. of their agents, okay. etc. Uh, we'll keep having these sorts of stories coming mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. up and until we find and, and we agree as a society. 
that it's important to protect uh, uh, these people to ensure that not just them but workers across the board are not exploited mm -hmm. by companies and agents and uh, the forces of capitalism. And that is where we'll wrap up the newsroom today. Thank you for joining us, Patrick Gadara, communications consultant. Today, the only man on the panel, Nancy <laughs> yeah. Booker. Yeah, I mean, very well. Huh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Booker, who is the chair of journalism department at the Multimedia University of Kenya, and Sharon Momani, who's my colleague, reporter right here at KTN. We thank you for being with us. And that's the wrap for the newsroom. Thank you as well for watching.